Hello my dear students. Today we are going to start first chapter from second book of class 11 that is snapshot. The topic is the summer of the beautiful white horse which is written by William Saroyan. Before we move into the understanding of the topic, let us know a bit more about William Saroyan. William Saroyan was born in the year 1908 and he died on 1981. He is one of the well-known American fiction writers. He took inspiration from the writings of his father and started writing short stories at very early age. His stories first appeared in the Overland Monthly. A number of his stories portray his childhood experiences among the American Armenian fruit growers of the San Joaquin Valley. Some deal with the feelings of rootlessness of the immigrants. Being the son of an Armenian immigrant, he knew what it was to be an immigrant. The summer of the beautiful white horse brings out vividly the vivacious and never say die spirit of the Armenian people. Let's discuss very important point of the story and that is theme. The theme of the story is clash of cultures between old generation and new generation. Next point is honesty is priceless last point is pain of immigration we will discuss all these three one by one in this story let us find out who all are the characters in this story first main protagonist is Aram who is of nine years then Morad who is cousin brother of Aram he is of 13 years next is uncle Khoshrov who is a bit eccentric than John Byro, a farmer. Aram is very passionate about horse riding, but because of poverty of their tribe, Garuklanian tribe, he is not able to accomplish his dream. Then we see Morad, who is a bit eccentric, okay, who wants to live his life, who is not bound by the poverty he is a kind of person who will act first and think later but one thing we must keep in mind that Morad is a kind of person who will live his life according to his rules and regulations but he will make sure that no severe damage is caused to anyone next is uncle Khosro who was a crazy fellow. He would get irritated very easily and he was a very impatient man. He used to utter a refrain that is, it is no harm, pay no attention to it. He is an impractical man who is least bothered about others' pain and sufferings. The story's last protagonist is John Byro who is a very hard-working farmer. With his hard work, he has possessed a horse and he never says no to hard work and he is very much conscious about his position. Not only that, he is a sociable person because in order to mix with Armenian people, he learned Armenian language when he was an Assyrian. Now we are ready with the theme, our characters. Let us start with the main story. Students, one day when Aram was sleeping, Morad knocked his door and he asked him to come out of his house quickly. And uh, when Aram looked out of the window, he found Morad was sitting on a horse, beautiful white horse. He could not believe his eyes. His, he thought that he was still dreaming. But it was not a dream at all. Then he thought that their family is very poor. 
they cannot buy any horse. Okay, so Morad must have stolen the horse. Then suddenly he remembered that Caroglanian tribe members principle is not to steal and be trustworthy. And here he thought that Morad cannot steal a horse because of the reputation of the Caroglanian tribe. But when he was in dilemma whether to come and join Morad or he should report the stealing to someone else, Ar Morad called him again. Then, forgetting everything, Aram joined Morad and while they were riding, he understood that Morad had stolen the horse for pleasure ride. But it was they did not intend to sell it to anyone. Therefore, it was not a crime for those two little innocent boys. They viewed it as if it is not a theft because their intention is to give it back. Here we find Aram was invited and uh, he sat behind Morad and learned and enjoyed horse riding. Now Aram wanted to try horse riding all by himself but the horse did not allow. The horse did not allow and he was thrown away and he fell down. Okay. Morad said that it took entire one month to train that horse. So easily he is not going to be tamed by Aram. It will take time. So what did they do? Every morning they used to enjoy horse riding and then they used to hide it to a place. Okay, so this happened for many days and both of them were very happy. In this way, they were able to fulfill their desire without letting anyone know about this act. Okay, then we find entry of Uncle Khoshrov. Uncle Khoshrov is a specimen of crazy streak in the family. This Uncle Khoshrov is a bit unique person in the family because he is impractical person, he is eccentric person who does not have any connection with logic, rationality, etc. He is heavy person, okay, he has big mustache and black hair and his voice is very uproarious, okay, he is very loud, he is voluble and impatient. He cannot tolerate any situation, okay, he wants result as quickly as possible. He, for anything, for anything, be it very div disastrous, be it very dangerous, he is going to utter his refrain or repeated lines that is, there is, it is no harm, pay no attention to it. Okay, and this is, this is uttered when his own house was in fire. Okay, one day he was sitting in a saloon, in a saloon, and that time his son Aram, his son Arak came to inform him that his house is on fire but he said it is no harm, pay no attention to it. So by this we can find out what kind of person was Uncle Khoshrov. Let's move ahead. Then we find John Byro, an Assyrian farmer, the owner of the stolen horse. John Byro is very hard working farmer and he is a Assyrian farmer. Okay, And rest of the members of that Armenia country were Armenian. They spoke in their Armenian language. Therefore, he had he was not able to communicate with anyone. Therefore, he learned Armenian and was sociable. He was able to communicate with other members now. He came to Khoshrov to tell about his life without horse. John Bairo needed that stolen horse badly because that was his lifeline. With that horse, he was able to transport his harvested item from village to cities and for that particular horse he had used he had given sixty dollars not only that he was not able to walk by his because his legs ached a lot so because of these three reasons he wanted his white horse back but he did not know since one month who had stolen it another point of doubting was that entire family was from Garuglanian tribe and nobody thought about stealing anyone else things. So how come this thiefery occurred in that place? This was a big question in the mind of John Byro. What happens? Let's move ahead. When he talks about his grievances to Uncle Khoshrov, 
He snubs him for his worries and anxious about the horse. According to Uncle Khosrov, they have lost everything when they migrated from USSR to Armenia, when another country, separate nation was made. And uh, when somebody has lost a horse, it was not a big deal, according to Uncle Khosrov. This shows that he was not able to understand others' pain. But Adam's mother says that he is a very soft-hearted person. But because they migrated to their country from their um, ancestral place, therefore he is a bit homesick. That is why he is full of worries and anxieties. Now then we see Aram's meeting with Morad. Now see, when this conversation of Uncle Khosrov and John Bairo was going on, Aram was there. He was able to listen to their conversation and he could make out that it was Morad who had stolen the horse of John Bairo since one month. And Aram wanted to report it to Morad. Aram ran towards Morad and he found Morad was standing the broken wing of a bird. This shows Morad was animal lover. He loved horse and then he loved bird as well. He was nursing this bird. Okay. He told Morad about John Byro's visit. He told that Morad, uh, John Byro had come to their parlor and there was conversation between John Byro and Uncle Khosrov. They talked about beautiful white horse, but he should not give that horse back to the right owner. Here we find that little boy had become so much attracted by that horse on which he was riding every morning with his brother. He wanted to give it back. Okay, he wanted to give it back, of course, but, the, but first he wanted to learn how to ride it. That is why he stopped him from giving back this horse. This Aram was the one who talked about morality when he wanted to when he saw Morad with a horse. But now his mindset has been changed. This shows that children's mind is fluctuating. He, their encounter with John Bairo. In the story we find every day Morad and Aram used to ride and he, they used to hide the horse in Fedvazian's deserted farm where eatables for horses were kept and it was isolated place because of which it was it was it was very safe for them one day when they were returning from early morning rides they encountered john byro both the boys came across john byro one day john byro studied the horse he inspected its teeth john byro knew that it was his horse okay it was his horse which was stolen by somebody since a month now john byro was able to think he was able to understand that this was his horse, but because of the boy's reputation, he was not able to charge them. Okay, and there was slight confusion in his mind that this horse might be duplicate of his own horse. After that, he went back. Now, both of them, they felt that the horse should be given back because one by one, the news will spread to entire village. Therefore, they might be trapped if John Bairo will tell it to uh, their family members as well. So finally, it was decided that Morad and Aram will give this back to John Bairo. And John Bairo will also be happy with that because he has lots of trouble to face because he is without horse. Because of the reputation of these boys, he concluded that the horse, mu the horse must be the twin of his stolen horse. He was left somewhat puzzled. Both of them, they decided to return the horse. Morad took the horse to Byro's, John Byro's barn. He tied the horse secretly and came back. Next morning, John Byro found the horse. He felt overjoyed. He came to share the good news with the Garoglanian family. He found the horse stronger and better than before. This shows that Morad and Aram had taken utter care of the horse. It was not only for their selfish desire they had kept the horse, but they had taken utter care of the same. Therefore, the horse was well tamed now, well behaved and stronger as well. So, this is how the problem of John Byro was solved. And when we analyze this story, we find the summer of a beautiful white horse is a story about the adventure of two boys who define the sense of morality in their own innocent way. 
The boys know that they belong to a tribe which takes pride in honesty and that no member of the tribe can be a thief. And yet one of them steals a horse, that is Morad. They use the horse to satisfy their urge for pleasure, uh, uh, pleasure rides. They refuse to view their act as a stealing, as they are not going to sell the horse but to return it to its right owner at their pleasure. Maybe even after a year. The story brings home the point that it is not easy to decide what is right and what is wrong. The irony and humor involved in the story makes it quite interesting in spite of the lack of actions. In this story, we further get to see that there is a contrast between old world based on value like simplicity and honesty and the new world in which old values are being replaced by the new. We are made to realize that there might be there might come a time when the youngsters like Aram and Morad would move away from the values of the community. At last we see both the boys Aram and Morad were deeply conscious of the values of their tribe. They knew that they were known for their absolute honesty. They continued to ride the stolen horse. They did not think it to be an act of stealing as they wanted to return it. When Aram asked Morad to keep the horse till he learned to ride it properly, Morad lost his temper. He said that they could not keep the horse with them for long. He said that no members of the Garuglanian family would steal. He asserted the horse must go back to its true owner. This shows that Morad was very passionate about horse riding and that passion was fulfilled and now it was time to give back the horse to the right owner. Therefore, it shows that however deviated they are from the forefathers, but eventually they are ingrained into the old values and old system by this we have completed the story if you all have any questions you can ask me we will meet in our next video till then take care bye bye